Recent research suggests that billions of years ago, our solar system experienced a dramatic event. A passing star came closer to the sun than any object from outside our solar system has ever been observed today. This near miss didn't just shake things up, it might have completely altered the orbits of distant celestial bodies and even led to the creation of some of the irregular moons around the gas giants. In this video, we'll explore what happened during this stellar flyby, why it's so important, and what we can learn from this cosmic encounter. Billions of years ago, a wandering star approached our solar system, coming within 110 astronomical units, AU, of the Sun. That's closer than the Voyager 1 probe, which is currently around 164 astronomical units away. To grasp how significant this is, consider that our nearest star today, Proxima Centauri, is over four light years away. A stellar flyby this close is almost unheard of in the context of our current understanding of the solar system's dynamics. Considering that the closest known star today, Proxima Centauri, is still over four light years away, that's a pretty dramatic near miss, and it would take such a disruption. Scientists, led by Suzanne Falsner and her team, ran over 3,000 computer simulations to determine how such an event could have influenced the orbits of distant objects, known as trans-Neptunian objects, TNOs. The results were astonishing. The flyby could have gravitationally stirred these objects, causing them to follow eccentric and tilted orbits, movements that have puzzled astronomers for decades. So why does this matter? Well, many TNOs, like the dwarf planet Sedna, have orbits that are so distant and elliptical that they defy traditional explanations. Sedna's farthest point from the Sun is a staggering 937 astronomical units, which places it far beyond the influence of the giant planets alone. The gravitational pull from this rogue star could explain why Sedna and other TNOs have such bizarre and elongated orbits. The flyby didn't just mess with the paths of distant objects, it may have fundamentally altered the architecture of the outer solar system. Many TNOs exhibit orbits that are not just eccentric, but also highly inclined, tilting away from the common orbital plane shared by most of the planets. This inclination is one of the most striking features that suggest an external gravitational influence, like that of the passing star. One of the most peculiar groups of TNOs are those on retrograde orbits, meaning they move in the opposite direction to all the planets. This is incredibly rare and almost impossible to explain through normal solar system dynamics. The simulations showed that the flyby could easily cause such objects to flip into retrograde orbits, adding a compelling piece to the puzzle. It's as if the star's gravity jolted these bodies, setting them on paths that defy the usual rules of planetary motion. Simulations suggest that about 7.2% of the original TNO population was injected into the inner regions of the solar system due to the flyby. While most of these objects were later ejected by the planet's gravity, some were likely captured as irregular moons. This capture mechanism is unique because it accounts for the high number of retrograde moons seen around Saturn and Jupiter. Moreover, this study might explain why these irregular moons often differ in color and composition compared to their parent planet's regular moons. The outer solar system, particularly the region beyond 60 astronomical units, hosts objects with a wide range of colors, from gray to very red. However, very red objects are missing among the captured moons, possibly because only certain types of TNOs were nudged inward and captured. This selective injection and capture process paints a clearer picture of why the irregular moons look the way they do today. Interestingly, the stellar flyby theory also aligns with recent observations from advanced telescopes like Japan's Subaru Telescope and NASA's New Horizons mission. These observations have revealed an unexpected number of TNOs at large distances, supporting the idea that these objects were indeed scattered by a massive gravitational event. The upcoming Vera C. Rubin Observatory is expected to shed even more light on this, potentially uncovering more objects with retrograde orbits, further confirming the impact of this ancient stellar encounter.
Let's focus on the irregular moons, the misfits of the solar system's moon family. Unlike the regular moons, which orbit in neat, predictable paths close to their planets, irregular moons are distant, often retrograde, and orbit at strange angles. Examples include Saturn's moon Phoebe and Jupiter's many retrograde moons. These moons share traits with TNOs, suggesting they may have been captured during the chaotic aftermath of the flyby. The statistics are striking. Saturn has 122 known irregular moons, while Jupiter has 87. These numbers are likely higher, as detecting smaller distant moons is challenging. Notably, retrograde moons outnumber prograde ones, especially around Jupiter and Saturn. For instance, Jupiter has 71 retrograde moons compared to just 16 prograde ones. This odd distribution strongly supports the idea that many of these moons were once TNOs, pulled inward by the stellar flyby and trapped by the gravitational pull of the gas giants. As the rogue star passed by, it nudged TNOs from the outer solar system closer to the Sun, where they encountered the giant planets. Some of these objects were captured as moons, particularly those on retrograde paths. These objects, particularly those on retrograde paths, found themselves unable to escape the planet's gravity. Instead of being flung back out into space, they settled into distant, erratic orbits. This process explains why these moons are often found far from their host planets, and why their orbits differ so drastically from the closer, more circular paths of regular moons. But why are these moons so important? Studying irregular moons offers a unique window into the early solar system. They are like time capsules, preserving clues about the chaotic environments and forces at play during their capture. The color and composition differences between these moons and their regular counterparts might reveal information about where these objects originally formed and what materials were present in different regions of the early solar system. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed exploring this cosmic mystery, don't forget to like, subscribe, and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Stay curious, and until next time, keep looking up.